Hello, it is 12, 24 a.m. It's November 5th, so uh, as the saying goes, remember, remember the 5th of November. Um, you know, if you, if you don't know what I'm referring to, that's okay. I haven't seen the movie, and I also haven't read the book either, so I don't even really know what it refers to, but I know it's a pretty popular saying. Um, so let's dive into it. What am I going to be talking about today? Well, I'm going to talk about front-end security. I'm also going to talk about why it kind of sucks, right? Why you should never implement security measures via the front end, or at the very least, why you shouldn't rely on them. Um, so for a non-technical person, let's talk about what, what, do I, what do I mean when I talk about front end? What is front end code? Um, so here's a website. It's called the World Clock, right? It's a bunch of clocks, as you probably could guess. Um, so there's all this stuff I see here. And as simply as I could put it, front end code uh, is basically what leads this content to be here, right? Front end code is the content. It's like all this text. And it's also the way this website looks, right? It's like this image. It's the text up here, right? Uh, front end code even deals with these drop downs, right? It's the things that we like can touch and feel and interact with and modify. Um, and if you all ever ventured out into the depths of the internet and right clicked and hit view page source code, um, you probably felt like a hacker looking through all this stuff that looks like junk and doesn't always make a lot of sense, right? Or at least not to non-technical people. Um, and you know, relevant story in the news. Uh, if you are in Missouri, right, and you know you are living under the governor of Missouri, um, it's quite possible that uh, that this could be considered hacking, right? They are currently persecuting someone for what they called HTML hacking, which uh, for technical people is, is obvious nonsense. Uh, but, right, we see all this front end code here. Um, this is pretty cool, um, and let me show you why this is a security issue or, or where concerns can be brought up. Well. As I said before, with front-end code, these are the things that we can feel and touch and change, right? So this right here says my cities and it says personal world clock. What if I told you I could change this from personal world clock to personal Ryan clock, right? For technical people, probably not that surprising. We'll get into the interesting stuff later on. For the non-technical people, that's pretty crazy, right? How do I do that? All I have to do is right click, or I'm gonna right click on the element, right? The, the part of this page I wanna change, right? Right here, right click, inspect element, right? And it'll pop up this weird, probably intimidating looking tab. All you need to know is that this right here, all this code corresponds with what actually shows up on this website, right? And that by highlighting, right? And right clicking specifically on this element, it's already like snapped me to the element that corresponds with it, right? That's why we see this text, my cities matches this text up here. Now, what I could do that a lot of people don't know is I can actually change the text on this web page, right? And how can I do that? Just by typing my name here and hitting enter, right? If I X out of this, right now, as you can see, this website has been changed. It looks different. Instead of saying personal world clock, it says personal Ryan clock. And now hold up, before you all run to timeanddate.com and try to see the change I make, keep in mind that this is only done locally. Only I can see this change and modify it for myself, right? This isn't gonna actually impact all of you. And you might say, well, Ryan, that doesn't seem like much of a security trick, or this doesn't really seem that you know, interesting. Um, well, let me tell you about a couple applications where it could be a little bit more interesting. One, you're on a call with a, you know, a phone scammer, right? They may show you um, a, a page from a legitimate website that has been doctored to make it seem like you either have a car warranty that is expired, or maybe there's a warrant out for your arrest, right? They could easily just take what, what is from a legitimate site and just change some of that stuff and screen share with you and convince you that it's real, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is, and I'm sure some of you watching this are students, and you may not always get the best grades. And these grades may be hosted on a website. And you may be able to change, you know, maybe a C to an A and, you know, a B to an A maybe even a D to a B to be realistic, right? Um, not that I condone that and not that I say you should, right? But I, you know, that is another potential concern is that a student may change their grade and fabricate things like their report card for their, their parents or their parental guardians or whomever their supervisor is in that given moment, right? Um, so those are a couple concerns, but what's the bigger concern, right? What's the, the, the more overarching implication that's probably mass applicable to you all? Right, assuming that you all are aware of, you know, that you shouldn't trust strangers on the internet or trust all the documents that you see, no matter how legitimate they look. Well, the implication is this. Let's say I go to a, let's just use a common site that everyone probably has an account to, neopets.com. Right, let's say I go to Neopets. I go to login. I'm gonna do hackers. 
just as my email. Obviously not my real email. And I put my password here, right? A lot of times what happens, right? And obviously it doesn't happen on this site because you know, shocker, I actually do not have a Neo account, uh, Neopets account. Um, a lot of times what happens is when we take this uh, uh, email, right? We'll have this like view, save logins and our password will be pre-populated. For a lot of you, this is probably websites like Facebook where as soon as you click your email, it pre-populates the password. You might wonder, well, why is that, why is that a security issue? Well, you know, you, it's possible that someone else might jump on your computer and they might be able to see this as well, right? The next thing you might ask me is, well, like even if someone jumps on my computer after me and is able to pre-populate this password here, right? They can't actually see my password, right? It's a, there's a bunch of black dots covering it for security reasons. And that's where I do this huge sigh and I go, oh no. And I say, well, this is an example of front end security giving us a false sense of security. Because what if I told you these black dots here, right? They're arbitrary and I could take them away, right? And I could actually reveal somebody's password, right? If I was on their computer and they had it cached in their browser. All you have to do, like I showed before, is right click, hit inspect element, right? And all we have to do here is there's this thing called type equals password. Um, to explain this in the least technical way possible, right? When websites have type and they put it equal to password, it will automatically cover the password characters with those black dots. But if we take this type away, right, just delete the type and hit enter, we now see that password in plain text, right? Maybe it said password one here, right? And I now just effectively got someone's password, right? So let's say you're letting a friend borrow your laptop or whatever it is, right? They could easily just go to a website. You have your credentials cached in, steal your password, right? Just by taking out this little type here. Another thing, right? We see max length equals 20. Let me uh, max out this line. Let's do, and I have a very loud keyboard. So you hear me clicking. It's not adding characters. And that's because if you count it up manually, these are 20 characters and that's the max length. I want you all to vote on your phones now. What do you all think I can do with max length since this is also part of the front end? That's right, I can change it. I'm gonna change it to 200, right? And magically, I am now able to add up to 200 characters, right? And I can send that, right? With the max length, you may be wondering, well, why is that an issue? Um, well, if you're able to send more data than a website's expecting, you could actually break them, right? Sorry for the harsh jump cut. Um, my computer actually ran out of storage um, for the last video and had to stop recording. Um, I did luckily finish right where I wanted to with that, but you know, I, I do not want to leave you all without saying a proper goodbye. Um, and also I've had this sitting around and should really install it. This is a uh, more memory for my computer. So, or more storage, excuse me. So I, I may look to do that, but as always have a good night. You know, I appreciate you all tuning in and uh, I'll talk to you all in the next video. Goodbye.